This is the Partner for Leads community podcast for small business owners and sales professionals. It's a podcast for those of you who want to build your business in a way that is all about relationships first. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm your host and Partner for Leads community manager, Roberto R. Hernandez. Some episodes of this podcast will be just me sharing things that I've seen as proven to work in business. Others will feature guest interviews with small business owners and sales professionals like you who share insights and expertise, the kind of info that can help make your entrepreneurial journey a lot easier. This episode features my first interview guest for the podcast, my good friend and one of the best sales guys I know, Will Schaub. We met around 2002 and have been friends ever since. He's been in the financial services and insurance world since 2002, and in 2017 started Will Serve Solutions to not only serve the insurance needs of individuals and businesses, but also to help business owners with things like tax mitigation, workman's comp audits, credit card merchant audits, and lots of other stuff that helps business owners realize expense reductions and tax incentives. Learn more about that at willservesolutions.com, and serve in this case is S-E-R-V. You can also find his website in the show notes for this episode. All right, on to my conversation with Will. Please enjoy. Will, welcome to the podcast. Thanks, Roberto. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, absolutely. So it's about 7 a.m. for you. Thanks for coming on early in the morning, too. (laughs) Uh, It's not a problem. What time do you usually start your day, by the way? About right now. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so you're ready to hit the ground running at 7 a.m. That's cool. You've been in the insurance and I'll just call it financial services business for, uh, well, with, with Aflac specifically over 14 years and ultimately as a, most of those years as a regional, so, uh, regional sales coordinator. And then did you actually have another title after that? Like a Yeah, that's the only one. I, I was an agent for a year and then the rest of the time I spent uh, running um, an agency. God, I can't believe that happened in a year. That's amazing. Well, that's a testament to um, your drive. And uh, for those that are listening, I met Will at an Aflac office where he started. And I lasted, I'm not even, I don't even recall how long there, maybe a year. And then um, I tried to go it with another organization and lasted overall in the insurance business for three and a half years. And I know for those of you that do that type of um, sales, it ain't easy. <laughs> no. And then you started your own business, Will Serve. Um, business solutions in in uh, January of 2017, which I want to talk a little bit about. The first thing I wanted to ask you, though, that I think uh, will be helpful to um, in any of the sales professionals who listen to this, and particularly if they happen to be in the insurance business or financial services, you dealt with so many um, agents and agent candidates uh, in your time <coughs> at Aflac alone. Not, and I'm not even... Um, thinking about, we haven't talked about this aspect of your your own company, but I wanted to ask you, what are the most common traits of success among all the agents and candidates that you dealt with? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I've asked, I've been asked that a, a lot of times. I think uh, the first thing is, um, if I were going to give any advice, it would be, um, you don't have to know everything before you go do something. Uh, and I know a lot of folks are analytical and sometimes they'll need to get all the information and vet it all out. But if you believe in the concept and you believe in what you're doing and you've got passion for it, you just got to go start either talking to people or doing something and then things will start, you know, uh, coming to fruition. Uh, the folks that have success, uh, well, first of all, you got to have a serious drive and, and big why the why has got to be bigger than the what. Um, so everybody I've ever, dealt with at Aflac or even any career, but especially at Aflac. Um, gosh, we had a software engineer that was really, really great at Aflac. And traditionally you would never buy insurance from a software engineer, but uh, he had drive. His why was huge. He had structure. He followed the directions of the folks that had done it before. Um, a lot of people try to reinvent the wheel and sometimes it's tough. But the other thing is uh, you got to get comfortable being uncomfortable. You got to go do a lot of things that are that you're not uh, used to. Uh, obviously, it has to be ethical and moral. But sometimes in sales, if you've never done it before or you're not that great at it yet, um, you got to you got to go do things that are uncomfortable. Yeah, absolutely. How long did it take you to? You mentioned the why, and you led with that, I think. But 
how long did it take you in your career with Affleck or what to, to realize that that was such a big component for you and for everyone that you dealt with? Or was it something that you had already learned by the time you got to Affleck? Well, my wife changed, right? I mean, my, my first year, uh, you know, I, I lost my car. It had been repossessed. And so the why was because it, it was necessary. I had to do it. I had made a choice to go into 100% commission opportunity at the time where a lot of folks thought that would be the worst time is when you actually need money. But it's probably the best time. So uh, my why then was just to, to do the grinding and do enough to, to survive. And then after that, uh, I realized my why was a lot bigger than, than you know, the actual doing or the what. Uh, my why uh, was because my mom worked really, really hard as a single parent of four kids after my dad passed away with very little resources or tools. So it just kind of came around and, and I, I realized that, you know, uh, you can have anything you want if you just work real hard. And so, um, and also because um, both of my parents had cancer and Affleck's main uh, product was a cancer policy. So I figured it, it made sense to go out and show everybody how they can protect their families in case of a major catastrophe. Yeah. Did you, because your why you were in tune with your why early on and, and it changed, as you mentioned, did you also, um, did you immediately project that onto candidates and already, you know, agents that you kind of took in under your wing as your as being their their team leader, if I can use that phrase, or did it take you a little while to connect uh, the dot between you, you know, you're sharing with them, imparting upon them that look, hey, look, this is really important, uh, this particular thing, this why thing, or did you kind of just inherently already know that and you started sharing that concept with them right away? I don't know if I inherently knew it right away. Uh, it it's like anything that you do; it takes practice, right? Uh, even if you know it, um, how you word it or how you say it or how you position it. But um, as I was interviewing a lot of folks and, and candidating a lot of folks to get really good people, right? Um, the, the why becomes part of the story, right? And in order for me to get folks um, to take a chance and let, you know, tell their spouse that they're going to come into a percent commission opportunity and actually do well. And we had folks that, you know, have done well. Um, I had to prove to them that the story was true. Uh, you know, so I shared my story. I shared the why shared to them, you know, ask them why they would want to do it. And once they decided, then we came in with structure, training, love, um, you know, process, you name it. That's really cool. I don't know that I've, it, it makes perfect sense, but I don't know if I've heard it put in those words with, um, being part of the story and opening with sharing uh, your why with candidates and, and you know, maybe existing agents. Um, that's pretty cool. And, okay, so the other big theme I wanted to touch on was your new business, and that is, um, I know there were probably multiple factors, but in 2017 you became, I mean, one I know one time we talked years ago or I heard you say that you know, everybody who comes in here to Aflac or in the insurance business who's a, an independent, they're independent. They're independent agents or independent contractors. They're kind of like, they're kind of like business owners, which I, I, I agree with and I understand. However, um, you know, as you're learning or as you learned or may perhaps already knew when you said that, that having a, a business or a company and then going to the stage where you've got you know, employees and those types of things is a different animal. So you decided to, you made the decision to become completely independent, start your own, um, your own company. And so the question around this is what drove you to start your own business or your own company? Well, you know, I, Affleck was a great company for me. Uh, it put me where I'm, you know, where I am now. It, it taught me a lot of things, but what I realized was when I was meeting with business owners and or candidates uh, to, you know, to bring them into the AFLAC uh, world. Um, we needed more opportunities to, to serve the public or serve the community or serve the business owner. Um, AFLAC's a great company. They're, they're the best at what they do in the supplemental insurance field, but they don't have every type of 
a service or a program that can um, take care of a business's needs. So that's why I decided to go out on my own and and be independent. But the other thing is I'm independent, so I can go and uh, represent a lot of different folks, a lot of different carriers like Affleck or Colonial or Washington National. Um, and then this way, when I'm doing an assessment or a consultation with a business owner, I find the right fit for them. Um, Affleck's not the right fit for everybody. Uh, it is a great fit for a lot, but uh, they just gave me an opportunity to share uh, ideas and strategies that might be different and it, says, uh, and it takes care of the of the business owner and not what I think or what my opinion is. Makes sense. So a little bit over a year into it now, what I guess is the biggest uh, takeaway or, um, or, or lesson or maybe <clears throat> biggest thing that you fl- reflect upon in the last year that you've been um, in this independent mode as, as your own business? Well, it's a lot, uh, a lot less stress because I'm, I'm the guy. So um, I'm the boss. I, I depend on me. I, I report to me. So that's one. But uh, I think the main thing is um, if you come from a position of service um, and your product is good or great and your service is great, but you come up from a position of service, um, 98% of folks are going to want to hear what you have to say, uh, whether it be business owners or professionals that serve those business owners. Um, that, that's my biggest takeaway. It's been, it's been really fun and it's been really exciting because now I'm having conversations that actually really matter. Uh, you know, when I sit in front of a business owner, even if they don't agree or they don't say yes, or we're not worried about the, you know, the outcome, um, the conversations get really deep and we figure out what the challenges are and we'll see if we can fix those. And if we can't, then, then we part ways. Um, but yeah, that's my biggest takeaway. So the first thing you said is maybe a little counter to what most people might think. But the second thing you said may be completely the reason why you said the first, but you said um, you found out it's less stress because you're the guy. Can you explain that a little bit? Yeah, well, you know, well, I'm also lucky because you know, I worked for a long time at a company where I was able to set up the ability to get lifetime renewals. But uh, now um, I don't focus on the outcome. So a lot of sales folks, they'll focus on the yes or the outcome, right? And, you know, it's a numbers game and that whole deal. For me, I just talk to as many people as I can about what I'm doing or how I can serve the business owner of the community. And that creates way less stress. I'm not looking for a close. I'm not looking to try to make a sale or make money. It actually follows me. It's really strange. But every day I go in, I just think, okay, this is an opportunity to share some information and some strategies and really help business owners that are really challenged. And if they don't need it, they'll let me know. And, you know, if it's not for them, they'll let me know right away. I even tell them right up front, just let me know right away um, if I can't help you or you don't need my help. Um, so it's less stress. And the other thing is when you're controlling your own destiny or your own calendar, uh, actually I met a, a guy, he's now one of my mentors and said, that, you know, everything that you work for, your family, you know, everything that you're working for, if all you do is work for it, then what's the point? He says, you need to have some time for yourself. So he says, you got to have at least an hour to an hour and a half a day during the day to yourself if you're your own business owner. So I play basketball like three or four times a week, an hour and a half a day during regular work hours. And actually I'm more productive because I'm less stressed. I'm, I'm more open to learning. Um, you name it. It's a, uh, so I, hopefully that answers the question, but, um, I don't worry about the outcome. I just go do the work and trust the process, uh, trust what I'm doing and, uh, and be, uh, in a position of service. And, and actually I have more outcome, better outcomes than, than I used to. That's amazing. And that's such a, I love the um, note of time for yourself and your, your basketball. It's a really such a helpful reminder for me as well, too, because I have this. Um, I, I'm pretty good at, at cutting out time for myself, but I have been trying to be better about taking um, time during the quote unquote work day and doing something like this. Um, so wonderful reminder. Will, 
great conversation. I have a feeling there are a couple things here we could dive into much deeper. And so maybe we'll do this again sometime in the near future, man. I really appreciate you coming on. You got it. By the way, you got to schedule that time. I appreciate it, Roberto. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> we'll talk to you soon. All right. See you. Thanks again for listening. If you like what you heard today, subscribe on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your favorite podcasts. Would you like to get an occasional email from me with tips and hacks that I'm learning from guests of this podcast? This is all stuff that you can use to grow your business. You'll get an email about once a week. You can unsubscribe at any time and I will never send you anything spammy. Just go to partnerforleads.blog. You can sign up right there. And that's partner singular, the number four, L-E-A-D-S dot blog. Thinking about starting your own referral group? Wondering how you'll manage your online presence, memberships, fees, reporting metrics? Are you struggling to get in front of the right clients? Struggling to spread the word about your new business? Starting a referral leads group is a great way to expand your prospect list, and you could even meet your next client within a few short days. What have you got to lose? Visit partnerforleads.blog forward slash startup to sign up for a free, no obligation, 15-minute consult. Until next time.